I do feel that Heather killed Brandon. I did not kill him. The drugs. You said you showed Heather the crushed pills that Brandon took from her purse. Yes. He did not show me that. The alcohol. I showed her everything on the counter. Beer cans, the vodka bottle. I didn't see any beer cans. The accusations. I was 15. I woke up to Heather being on top of me. Did you have relations with AJ? No, I did not. With Mark. Oh my God. That's the Lucas. He's the one who's buying all these people off. Now. I believe you have an addiction problem. I, I just, I, this is just not what I came on this show for. The dramatic conclusion. If you don't get yourself straightened out, we're going to be burying you. Yesterday, I sat down with Brian and Heather, whose 15-year-old son, Brandon, tragically died five years ago of an accidental drug overdose after swallowing and snorting Heather's morphine pills along with vodka and beer. Now, Heather was tried for manslaughter and negligent homicide in his death, and she was acquitted of those charges last year. I want to be very clear about that. Here's what happened yesterday. The night that Brandon passed away, I wasn't there. So what I know is Brandon asked Heather to buy him alcohol. She obliged. She bought him beer. She bought him vodka. Did you or did you not <laughs> buy these minors alcohol? No, I did not, Dr. Phil. I did see them trying to drink. Are you telling me that you knew your son was drinking that night? I didn't think he was drinking. I, I thought You walked I it in into time. the kitchen and I he was standing with a time. drink in his hand I thought and I you didn't think he was drinking? I know that they were drinking, but I didn't think... You died and I you didn't think. Brandon goes into her room, takes her morphine tablets, he crushes them up, they snore them up their nose, and they continue to drink. By our math of your reports and the others that were there, your son consumed approximately 22 beers, four or five shots of vodka, took three morphine tablets, and sniffed four rails of morphine. That's the allegations, yes. Yeah. Do you dispute that? I, I, I do. Travis decides he wants to go home. Heather comes out in her own testimony and says, Brandon was too drunk to drive. He was belligerent. He was falling into the walls. She drives Travis home. Brandon is fading in the back seat as if he wants to sleep. So she comes inside to get him a pillow and a blanket. I was actually, oh good, he's sleeping. I gave him a pillow and a blanket and gave him a kiss goodnight. Heather never called 911. What kind of animal is she? She's a monster. Are you on medication now? Minimal. Because you're slurring your words. I have brain injury, Dr. Phil. I have a I card mean... here of your behavior prior to the show, according to your friend Bernice. Last night, what you did to me is unforgivable, Heather. She took 39 narcotics within 20 hours. I honestly believe you died. Your eyes rolled in the back of your head, you started seizing, and then your mouth fell open. My son had to witness all this, Heather, my 11-year-old son. I was so scared, so scared, Heather. I cannot believe you did this to me. And now the story continues. Dr. Phil's big ultimatum for accused mother, Heather. Now, one of the consistent allegations against Heather was that she may have supplied her son with the alcohol he drank the night of his death. Now, some of Brandon's friends who were there the night he died are here today to tell their side of the story. Take a look, and then we'll talk. I really saw a change in Brandon's behavior when he went and lived with his mother. Brandon started partying a lot. Heather knew we were partying. She would buy us the alcohol for the parties. I witnessed Heather buying alcohol for not only Brandon, but also for me on numerous occasions. She partied with us a couple times, but she'd usually stay in her room. She would let us party and pretty much do whatever we wanted. We'd go to the hotel rooms and she'd buy us beer and liquor, weed, hang out there, drink, have fun. 
the night that Brandon died, we go to mom's house, had two or three beers, started doing some vodka shots. We we're hanging out in the kitchen, which is very close to Heather's bedroom. He comes back out with her purse, pulls out an orange pill bottle, and started crushing them on the table. He did one. I couldn't do it, so he ended up finishing what he had portioned up for me. Then I did decide I wanted to go home. I went and asked Heather, Brandon's mom, if she could bring me home. So she ends up coming into the kitchen, all the alcohol, the painkillers, very, very obvious of what we were doing. She didn't say like anything, so got dropped off. Last time when I heard Brandon's voice was him like singing to the radio in the back seat and slowly fade away. I walked to the kitchen, saw the mess of pills and cans all over the kitchen counter. I was pretty worried what was going on, so I waited for Brandon and Heather to get back. Only Heather walked inside, and I asked, do you think we should bring Brandon to the hospital? And Heather said, no. I checked on Brandon a few times, and I went to sleep. In the morning, I walked into the garage. I found him passed away in a car. Seeing his face is still burning in my head. Very hard. I do feel that Heather killed Brandon. Knowing that she bought him alcohol, weed, and I knew that he was taking prescription drugs from her. I don't know if she gave it to him or if he took it, but either way, she knew about it. She could have brought him to the hospital. Instead, she tried saving her own self. She is the reason why Brandon isn't here today. She had a responsibility to take care of him, and she didn't. Well, joining us now are Travis, AJ, Mark and Chris. And uh, guys, thank you so much for being here. I wish we were talking about anything else besides this. And I can't tell you how much I wish Brandon was in the fifth chair uh, <laughs> sitting right next to you. Um, Chris, let me talk to you first. Now, you say you witnessed Heather buying Brandon and friends alcohol. Is that true? Yes. And tell me about that. That was really hard. Um, I was 15 years old and I just witnessed my friend pass away. And police are asking me if we bought alcohol. Yes, we did. I had a hard time remembering when. It wasn't. We went to Ashford Spirit and I still remember that night very clearly. Usually when we bought alcohol, it was usually that night, but it was not that night. It wasn't the night before, it was before that. We went in, Heather and Brandon went in because Heather could not physically pick up the beer. She had Brandon go in with her and pick it up. But you say you don't drink. No. So who were you buying it for? Um, I wasn't in there buying anything. I told you, the videotape at Ashford Spirit which is a store. Which is a store. They didn't know me, and they have camera uh -huh. right there with everybody coming in. They did not see me at all the day before, the day of, or the day after buying. They didn't even know who I was buying alcohol for any one of those kids. Did you ever go in there and buy alcohol with Brandon? No. Never happened? No. It, children weren't allowed in there. That's, that's uh, ludicrous. Chris, what do, you, what do you say about that? He's listening to all his, I really his, have, his buddy all I really right have there to and what to say. say. All I really have to say is if you were 15 years old, would you go to your family's package store to buy alcohol? Would that make any sense? Mm -hmm. well, and did you, did, you said you showed Heather the crush pills that Brandon took from her purse? Yes. That night, you showed them to her when? When she got back from dropping Travis off. Okay. So when she gets back from dropping you, Travis, off, you show her the crushed pill. She comes in without Brandon. Yes. He's in the car. She comes in without him. You show her the crushed pills on the counter and say what? I showed her what he was doing. I said I was sick. I hadn't been up. I showed her everything on the counter, and I asked her, should we bring Brandon to the hospital? She said, no, he'll be all right. Just we'll check on him for a little while, which in turn meant I was going to check on him uh -huh. because she went to bed. D did you check on him? I checked on him. Did she ever check on him? No. 
Okay, why did you leave your son in the car? Why, why did you think he was asleep in the back of the car? Did you think he was drunk? No. You just no, thought he I was thought asleep? he was finally, it was like 5 in the morning, and he was finally getting some sleep. So I went, I went in, got a pillow and a blanket, gave him a kiss on the forehead, love you, baby, and that was it. But when it came time to take Travis home, you didn't want to ride with him driving, correct, Travis? He's underage. Why? He didn't have... He was very, very drunk. I'm sorry? He was very drunk. He was very drunk? Yes. And did you tell Heather that? Yeah. You said he's too drunk to drive me home? Yeah, I did. I understand he didn't have a license and he was underage, but he did drive. Yes. And you said, no, I don't want him taking me home. He's too drunk. Did he tell you that? No. Travis did not tell you he's too drunk, come take me home. No, he said, I, w I want you to take me home. And he also told me that he snuck out and that he, he didn't want me to tell his father. We haven't heard everything Brandon's friends have to say about Heather's behavior. One of them has another shocking accusation. We might as well get it all on the table. We'll be right back. We got a hotel room. Heather bought us a liter of vodka and a six-pack. All three of us were pretty drunk. I woke up to Heather being on top of me. You've got to understand, Heather, you have a serious, serious addiction. How dare you? I, I just, I, this is just not what I came on this show for. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. She's 16. There was a party. I was naked. You were sexually engaged with five people. <laughs> Promiscuous. Explicit photos surfaced on Twitter. You can see it was on her. Exploited. Were you aware that a video was taken? And defiant. Tell me why I'm irritating you. I don't want to be responsible for getting five guys thrown into jail. No, because you want to be popular. Life. No, I'm already not popular. People already hate me. Tomorrow, then on Thursday. My mother is attached to her junk. I don't believe I'm a hoarder. Is it time? These are things that you say for an intervention. You never know when you might need a wheel. Thursday. I think Heather bought Brandon marijuana all the time, and I didn't know it. The struggles that we went through with his drug use the whole time he was getting it from his mother is just disgusting. She was his mother. How can you do that? How do you give alcohol, marijuana, and prescription drugs to a 15-year-old person? I never bought drugs and or alcohol for Brandon Lee Spetsielski. Never. Well, that was Heather, who says her life has not been the same since she found her 15-year-old son, Brandon, dead in the back seat of her car five years ago. He died of what appears to be an accidental overdose after swallowing and snorting Heather's morphine pills along with vodka and beer. Now, Brandon's father and best friends all blame Heather for Brandon's death because they say she bought her son alcohol and allowed him access to drugs. Here's what DCFS said about what happened. Uh, Brandon's mother observed her child inebriated and was reported to have knowledge of his drug and alcohol use on that evening. She had multiple opportunities to seek medical treatment but failed to do so. She failed to obtain medical treatment in a reasonable amount of time. According to her, reported time frame, the child died between 6.30 and 8.30 a.m. It is reasonable to believe if Brandon was provided medical treatment during the four-hour time frame that his mother had contact with him, his chances of survival may have been dramatically increased. Instead, she displaced her responsibility on Chris, who was feeling ill. Now, that was their finding. That was an allegation. Yes, it was. No, it was a finding. A finding of... By uh, that agency. Yes. Department of Child and Family Services. Yes. I mean, it was unsubstantiated. I mean, it, they couldn't... It they was say substantiated. That, well, it was so substantiated. What about yours, Brian? It was... Your packet of okay, it before. Hold on. Hang on. Hang on. That put him in no, depression no, no, and started no, 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 no. him doing drugs. We're talking to me. We're talking to me. We're talking to me. It, it, this, these are not unsubstantiated because we have Chris here who's saying he showed you the crushed up pills he, he's on the counter. He's saving himself. 
because he changed sure his story. I'm not sure how that helps him. No, he, and, he changed his story because first, and AJ I'm sorry to interrupt saying, you, but first okay. Brian came to the house, was screaming at Chris. Chris was taking the blame for it. I was out on the porch. I didn't know what was going on. Chris told me before we got in, because there was there, it, there was Doritos, everything all over the place. He told me to go to bed and let Brandon clean up the next the next morning. That's exactly what you said. Are you going to say that you didn't say that? When did I say that? You told me when I started cleaning up to not clean up and let Brandon do it the next morning. Okay, what were you cleaning up? Well, I started cleaning the. T there was a table there. there what was were you cleaning off of the table? Well, there was Doritos, just mess, a huge mess. Beer? And it was 5:30 in the morning. The beer cans? I didn't see any beer cans. No, sir. I told you I, I saw the vodka bottle. Yes, I don't know where they got that from. Okay. But that was went down the drain, and I threw it in the garbage. And for everybody to boo Chris, me, nobody knows my story, so at well, least... Well, we're trying to learn it. Chris, were there beer cans? Yeah, it was the only thing dirty in the house. I'm sorry? It was the counter, and it had the pills, the beer cans, and the vodka bottle. Okay, I think, the, I think the point is, Heather, that according to what you're saying, you're saying that you knew your son was drinking vodka, which is worse than beer... Uh, Chris is saying he showed you crushed up pills where he had crushed up no, morphine he did tablets. Not. He did not show to me snort that. Them. No, he did not show me that. He did not tell me that. Okay. He came in earlier. Travis he is a saying he came to you and said well, he's Travis too drunk. Is, is, that was the first time Travis was ever at the house. You I never even he... knew he existed. Okay, so he certainly had no agenda against you because you didn't even know he existed. He Go does ahead. because Brian paid him off the hundred dollars a head. Brian, or Brandon was mad that I wouldn't let him drive me home. He was too intoxicated. I didn't want any of us to get hurt. And she said, "Oh, don't worry about him. Can we take polygraphs? He's been that that drunk before. You don't so she's, want that. She's known him being that drunk before." Now AJ has another revelation about Heather. In the summer of 2007, I was 15. Me, Brandon, and Heather went to a mall. After shopping for a while, we got a hotel room. We went to the package store where Heather bought us a liter of vodka and a six pack of other alcoholic beverage. And we went back to the hotel room. All three of us were pretty drunk. Brandon ended up passing out on the bed where I laid next to him and Heather laid next to me. Earlier in the morning, I woke up to Heather being on top of me, forming in sexual activities. We were having sex. I was very shocked that that happened, knowing that Brandon was sleeping six inches away from me and uh, why his mother would do that. So I was very stunned. I felt sick to my stomach and I had to leave. I didn't know how to tell my best friend about what his mother had done. Since the night in the hotel, I've never discussed the matter with Heather. She's been caring me for almost six years now. Heather, what do you say about that? Uh, I, I really don't know what to say. All, all I know is... Did that happen? My, no. My, it's, it, the detectives came to my door. D we're not talking about the door. We're asking what? whether or not you had he, sex with this... He was a child. Exactly. Exactly. No. He says he I was woke up. With, my fiance was 42 that died in the accident. Or, no, or, I don't. I, was I, this was this a close call? Was this? Is there anything fuzzy about this at all, AJ? Not at all. Not at all. It, it happened. It needs to come out, and it happened. My child died. Did you have sexual? I don't really care about anybody else but myself. Did you right have now. sexual I'm... relations with him? A mother will step in front of a bus for a child, not throw him under it. And later, there's a question on the floor. You're either willing to accept it or you're not. I'm scared. I am Where's scared. I, I'm a mess. I have so much anger inside. 
this May on Dr. Phil. Did she go three days without a shower because you wouldn't permit it? No, because she chose to. She claims her marriage is like a prison. Have you called her stupid, ugly, well, fat? I'm trying to motivate. I'm trying to really? see. This is motivational? Plus, she's ready for her wedding. Bonnie asked me over the phone to marry him. I never met him in person. She sent him a lot of money. Is this a love scam? He hung up. Please tell me not to text him anymore. Dr. Phil. Can we try to call him? Grills the groom. Hey, Donnie, myself, and the Cyber Crimes Division would love to chat with you. And... An alcoholic mom. You drink about a gallon of vodka a day? Mm -hmm. Destroying her family and her life. I drove with my son. I was drunk the whole time. You lost custody of your son. You have access to him, supervised. Legally, I don't have to be supervised. Trust me, that changes today. He straight up says that you sexually assaulted him in his sleep in, it makes me sick. in 2007. It really makes me sick. Did that happen? No. I, I, it makes me sick to actually have those allegations against me. I just, I, I don't even know what to do. I feel off. I feel so off. I don't even know what to do with my life. I don't even know. People are coming at me at all angles, and Brian's the main person you know, coming the, at me. Uh, but you, you have A.J. down here who said, and I quote, because it really jumped out at me. A.J. He said, and I quote, I don't want any secrets anymore. I just wish I could have my best friend back. My child died. My, in my arms, he was gone. Did you have sexual... I don't really care about anybody else but myself Did you right have now. sexual I'm, relations with him? No, I don't. You cared about yourself instead Did you of have right sexual now, relations with him? I want to and have to get You should have put him first. You're second. A woman always puts her child of first. Of course. Parents put of course. Always. And, and you, you broke his nose to put him in depression and get... Hey, listen, a mother will step in front of a bus for a child, not throw him under it. That's what you did. Did you have sexual relations with AJ? No, I did not. Did you have sexual relations with Mark, who's sitting right next oh to you? Oh, my God. Mark was my son. He, I, I mean, that, that, that's ludicrous. I took care of him since he was a child. Mark, what do you have to say? I was 11. It was, it was the exact morning of September 11th. Um... I was home from school. I actually got suspended. I woke up with her hand in my pants, and <laughs> just straight to the point, I remember she just said, uh, when we stood up after, it was probably 15 minutes after, and she's just like, I wish you were older, or only if you were older, sorry. Did that come from him? No, nah, it's more of what I thought about is, you know, Brandon, I didn't want to have to bring all this up. Mark, you're all about the money. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you, uh, you came to me for cleats. I didn't give you any more money. There was no money. You went to him. Everybody else is being paid off by him. And I mean, I have proof of in those in those testimonies that I gave you. Um, there was text messages when he opened a salon and said, "It's a hundred dollars a head if you testify against me and say that I uh, I bought drugs and alcohol for him." It w that's why he did that it was it was him he's the one who's buying all these people off i just have no proof of it but but well let's I mean, ask him hey, mark did he pay you to say that or did it actually happen dr phil absolutely not right. no and aj did this actually happen this actually happened do you want to hear some thoughts from me of course I do. I, I just, I feel like the whole world's against me. That's what I feel like. And, I understand. And, and, and everybody, this is my life. I go home to this. I understand. You know, and, I, and I'm concerned. And I don't know how to get on with my life now. Take some responsibility. Well, He's listen. He's talking, Brian. Shut your mouth for once. <clears throat> You've been charged with manslaughter twice. They were both accidents. You come out here, you're slurring your words. If you don't admit what's going on and get yourself straightened out, we're going to be burying you in a very short period of time. Somebody said that I killed my son. I would say that obviously you don't know me. I loved my child more than I think anybody could ever love a child. I still 
love my baby. I still talk to him all the time. Bottom line is, he died because of her. If she wasn't in his life, he would have lived. We've been talking to Brian and Heather, whose 15-year-old son, Brandon, tragically died five years ago of an accidental drug overdose after swallowing and snorting Heather's morphine pills along with vodka and beer. Now, Heather was tried for manslaughter and negligent homicide in his death, and she was acquitted of those charges last year. I want to be very clear about that. Brian says he still believes she's guilty. In fact, he brought a civil suit against her and, and got an award of damages against her for the death. And, of course, there are very different standards of proof in criminal versus civil proceedings. You know, I, I, I wasn't there for any of these events. Or are you... Are you with me here? Are you listening to me? Yes. I know that he is very upset, has a lot of unfinished business, has taken out ads against you, has sued you, uh, sought your prosecution. Is part of this driven by his own guilt for saying to himself that he should have seen this coming or something? I mean, only he knows that. But what I'm looking at, is, is just the pattern here. And you've been charged with manslaughter twice. I, I think alcohol and drugs have been involved both times. Yes, I was connected to two deaths. Yeah. But they were both accidents. I understand. And they both involved... And I loved them both they very both, much. They both involved alcohol and drugs, though, correct? Oh, well, yes. Okay, I'm just saying, yes, I'm just telling yes, you, yes. I'm just telling you in but terms of... I don't of, drink, I don't, <clears throat> the, my mom on prescription does, I'm trying so hard to get off of them. But really listen to me right now, it's, it's sorry, important I'm that you sorry. hear this. Go ahead. Because, you know, I kind of go through a differential diagnostic process in my brain, this is just the way I think. And so I, I, I look at long-term patterns and I see here that you, you've been involved with, been charged with manslaughter twice, both times have involved alcohol and drugs. Uh, the second time, your own son tragically lost his life. Uh, we have Chris here who is saying that you certainly knew that there was drinking and drugs involved. Uh, we, we, we have this young man, Travis, who did, did any more ride in the car because of fear that your, your son was so incapacitated that he couldn't operate the vehicle safely. Then we have these two young men in the middle, AJ and Mark, who are saying that you've been inappropriate with them on two occasions. I have no doubt that that involved an altered state of consciousness. We have your friend who you brought with you from Connecticut to, to come with you and support you here, uh, who says that you're yelling, screaming, embarrassing her. Uh, actually took enough medication to shut down your respiration. She's pounding on your chest, slapping your face, rushing you to the emergency room. You come out here, you're slurring your words. You're, you're making no sense with many of the things that you're saying. And so it tells me that you are in a very compromised and incapacitated state. This is not my first time to do this kind of thing. And I believe if you don't admit what's going on and get yourself straightened out, we're going to be burying you in a very short period of time. That's what I think. I believe you have an addiction problem. I think you need help, but you have to take it. And if you don't, you're going to wind up dead. Will you make the commitment to do it? on an all-new Dr. Phil, unashamed. At this party, you wound up being sexually engaged with five people. Mm -hmm. And exploited. Were you aware that a video was taken? That's tomorrow. Brandon was my only child. And anybody that loves a child more than themselves knows that that is such a huge change in anybody's life. That hole in my heart will never heal. Best card I was ever dealt is having my son Brandon. The worst card was when I lost Brandon. I believe you have an addiction problem. 
and I think it is impairing your thinking, it is impairing your judgment, and I think you are medicating yourself out of guilt and fear and running from it, and you can run, but you'll just die tired because you can never escape it. And the one thing he said, as much as he has disdain for you, is he said, admit what's happened and get yourself straight. Even he, through all of his, his angst and, and hatred towards you, is telling you to get help. And you need to get help. If you do not, if you do not, you're going to kill yourself and probably somebody else. And the best friend you got in this room is sitting right there in that chair, Bernice. And the second best friend you've got in the room is me. Because I'm telling you, I don't think you're some horrible person that should be put under the jail. I think you need help. And if you'll take it, I'll set it up and give it to you. I will get you the help. But you have to take it. And if you don't, you're going to wind up dead, bottom line. And you can debate what you knew or didn't know that night. I, I think you were high that night. Dr. Film, and your made son really dies, bad judgment. You want to die. I want to die every day of my life. I agree. I understand. I mean, you're not supposed to ever cremate and put it in a little box that I saw that he did. Um, a child. I don't know what you want uh, out of this, but I'm telling you that you're not ever going to have a rational conversation with her until she's clean and sober. And that needs to happen before anything else happens. And I'm telling you, I will make arrangements to put you into a, a dual diagnosis drug rehabilitation facility that will deal with your depression, it will deal with your personality issues, and it will deal with your addiction. If you will take that help, I will set it up and make it happen for you. But the deal is, you go there from here. You don't, you don't go home, you don't go get your stuff together, you go there from here, direct. There is no stop in between, and I think you have to have medical supervision uh, concerning withdrawal and detox, and I think without it, you could put yourself in serious harm's way. So I think this has to be medically supervised, and I think it has to be to criteria. Not some 28-day wonder. I think you have to work till it's right. And if you have any options, then I, I don't know what they are. I'm offering this to you, and I'm asking you, will you make the commitment to do it? My doctor is working with me back home. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me finish, please. Let me well, you, talk, okay, please. Okay, you Everybody think about that. Uh, get, you gather your thoughts. My We're going to take a break. Then you can tell me what you want to say. There have been a lot of allegations made today, uh, but Brian says he only wants one thing from her. I don't know if he's going to get me. what he came for or not, but we're going to talk about that when we return, and we're going to let her say what she wants to say. We'll be right back. What is it you want from her? Um, I, don't, I really don't want anything from her. I, I mean, I came to the show for some awareness for parents. I understand. Um, I, you know, if she gets help, that's great. I wish she would take some responsibility for actions. It would help in her getting better, I think, and, and moving forward with her life. That would be, you know, for her sake. I don't really care what she does at this point. But, you know, I came here, parents that are having problems with their teens, what signs there are, if there's a number they can call, a hotline, where they can get help. I mean, those are important to me because I, we found I'm ourselves well in a position... That. You know, we're, you know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know she was providing it, but it was very difficult for me as being a parent to get help and information. So that's well, why that I came is to in the, the show. That is in the absolute DNA of the Dr. Phil show. And we talk about this on a regular basis, and it, you're right to bring it up. It is a very relevant sort of thing. Um, we have so many resources on drphil.com for it. And let me tell you, parents... If you're the popular mom, the popular dad, where all the kids think you're cool because they can do what they want to at your house, let me tell you, that's a ticket to hell. Um, that's not going to happen. Um, 
One thing I I've would... asked you straight up. Can I? This is I, I am I'm making an offer to you. I, I will arrange for you to uh, go to Origins Recovery Center. Uh, it's a dual diagnosis treatment center. Uh, they deal with the psychological issues, the medical and biochemical issues, the addiction issues. I'm offering that to you as a gift to try to get your life back in order. Uh, if you want that gift, you need to say yes, but the caveat is you go there from here. Heather. No, I, I, can I Could you do this for one Casey more thing, Brandon? One, I, I named want... my son after her son in memory of her son. That's how much I love Heather. I would do the world for Heather. And the reason I'm here right now is I was going to testify and sit up there. And I do believe Heather's a beautiful, wonderful mother. And she loved her child, loved her child to death. But you've got to understand, Heather, you have a serious, serious addiction. Okay. And I watched you almost die last Last night. I want you to answer my question. You, you're, you either are willing to submit yourself to care and treatment or you're not. Dr. Phil, I am, but I also want you to know that through my whole entire relationship with Brian, he has been abusive. Not only, I left him, I divorced him because he was abusive. Uh, then uh, he turned his hand on and on, on Brandon. You, you should put I that... I had a restraining order. He had to go to anger management. I mean, that, he needs help, too. You should he put just that... put on Twitter about his, 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 his daughter is too fat, and he's showing her how to lose weight. You should put that he needs on help, your, too. You should put that on your list of things to do at the treatment center. Yes. To talk about that and to deal oh, with that. The I, I don't the have question, anger management problems. He does. The question is very simple. You are either willing to leave this stage and be escorted to Origins Recovery Center on South Padre Island in Texas, oh, Heather, or you're please. not. It's it's yes. Do it's, it for a, it's a yes or no. Do it for dare you guys? You're so How dare, dare you? I, I just I, this is just not what I came on this show for. I understand. There's a question on the floor, Heather. You're either willing to accept it or you're not. I don't even know what to say. I, 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 I'm, I'm so confused right now. I am so confused right now because I came here <clears throat> hating him for what he did to Brandon. Now somehow it's always turned around on me, it's you know, between the, you. the media but and everybody else. turned around on you. I'm offering, you can't be the victim when somebody's I, um, offering you a gift. I thank you. And I thank you so much. And thank you for having me on and listening to my story. Are, and you, I asked are you willing you for to help. accept this treatment? You asked for help. This is it. I, yes, I would love to, but I, I, there's other people involved that need help too. All you need to worry about right now is you. You're either yes, willing to leave here and go there, or you're not. Can, can, if I say yes, can you please look at him and tell him, to all of them, to leave me alone forever? No, no threats on my Facebook, nothing. I don't want anything to do with any one of those people that have hurt me. Well, None. there's a real simple thing to do, and that's just unplug from Facebook. No, it's not that easy. That's not what you need to worry about right now. I'm offering you the treatment. You're either going to go or you're not. I, I need to speak with my parents first. Well, her they're parents my, are enablers. They're my, my, yes, her okay. parents are enablers. Well, you're you're a grown woman. And you always hated them, Brian. You you're, hate yourself. You're, you have no soul. You have no grown, heart. Heather, you're a grown Dare woman. Dare you. So I assume your answer then is no. No, I'm not Because the no. offer expires when I walk out of here. But understand... I do have I'm a responsibility. Scared, Dr. Phil. I understand. I don't, I don't really think I have. I have gotten off most of everything on my own with my doctor. Then it'll be easy. I came here. I had a behavioral <clears throat> health appointment with a therapist, and I said no to them to come to your show. Good, it was a good choice. 
So if this is a better choice for me to go there, then of course I'm going to say yes. Well, do you think I, I know what I'm to, doing? I want to heal my heart. Do you think I know what I'm doing? Yes, I do. I think this is a life-saving offer for you. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. I think it's a life-saving offer for you. I hope so. And, you know, understand, since starting this show, I've received five million letters of people asking for help. And very few get through, you're here. I'm offering you this help. And, and you, you need to take it. And understand there is a condition. And, and you can't go backstage and change your mind. So I'm just asking you to do this voluntarily. I was just hoping to die naturally. I never, ever thought of hurting myself. Well, no, I don't mean that. I mean just, hell, hell if it hadn't been for Bernice, you'd be dead now. I'd be talking to an empty stool if she hadn't kept you alive last night. Then that's my destiny. Yeah. Your destiny is I really to help help Heather. If it's your time, it's your time. Well, then, no. die, at or, then die at Origins. <laughs> I'm asking you. I'm scared. I am I scared. I, 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 I mean, we'll you know how scared I was to even come here? Oh, I can imagine. My I have God. been in that house being afraid <laughs> to go anywhere for so long for the sake of being, you know, fingers <clears throat> pointing and everything and not everybody knowing the whole story. Yeah. So, you going to go or not? Yes. Yes. I will go. We'll make the arrangements. We'll get you transported there. We're going to sit down with you backstage. We're going to pop up a website, show you where you're going, give you all the information, all of which you're entitled to. But you, you're you going somewhere because... I, Doctor, look, I, I, I'm a mess. I have so much anger inside. I, I just... I don't know what it, that's why I'm here and you know Just I did him. place a lot of can I please talk, place a lot of anger on other people like I blame other people yeah. when me you know it was hard on me I'm the one who found my son and it was easy just to say it wasn't you know I could have done something differently I mean even the doctor said oh he didn't he didn't suffer he died in his sleep thank it was an accidental overdose which you. helped me you know so I'm scared I am so scared of being without my my yeah. little dog which is my you know in my parents in my home which I have squirreled away in because of what people have done to me like Brian well this is your first step back into life and I I accept your commitment Okay. Right. Right. <laughs>